Hi, greetings from the Pacific Northwest. Bo here. Been a couple of weeks, got some vinyl finds, and I got some hockey cards to show since this is a multi use channel. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to my friend James, JD66 Cards. If you like vintage hockey cards and you like vintage baseball cards, you should follow his channel. Guy shows great stuff. He, he's got this knack for finding really quality raw cards and uh, picking them up at a pretty good price. And, you know, he gets back some really good grades on it. Because I know he, 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 for things for his personal collection, he likes to, he likes to get slabbed, send them off to PSA. So, so these are all uh, eBay finds for me. Uh, these first two, these are 80, 81 uh, Opeaches. Because the Opeaches have the, are, the tops, they, for some reason, they cover up the, the, the position and the name, and there's no name on the back of the card, but the Opeaches lifted like this. They were scr you had to scratch them off, which makes them less valuable. This is Wayne Gretzky's second year card. Wow, we're getting a lot of glare. Sorry about that. Those are Gretzky's second year. Same, same set. Mark Messier, rookie card. Both he and Gretzky got their start in the WHA. Uh, Gretzky with the Indianapolis Racers got sold to Edmonton and the rest is history. Messier actually started with the Cincinnati Stingers, for those of you that remember. I'm a big fan of the old defunct league stuff. And then Mr. Dale Howarchuk, rest in peace. Um, this is his rookie card. I think, I think this is a, is this an Opeachy or a Tops? It's an Opeachy, and it's the 82-83 Opeachy, Dale Howarchuk. Um, there's a band in uh, Quebec. That has named that named themselves after him. Uh, alternative rock band, the early 2000s. Uh, they even have a song called Les Dale Howard Chucks, and that's what they were. They were the Les Dale Howard Chucks. Um, I'm gonna find that CD one of these days. Okay, that's the hockey cards. The rest of this is all gonna be records. Um, I'm gonna start with the stuff I got at Bob's. I've been on a little bit of a nostalgia kick. For the 80s. You know, back in the 80s, I kind of got away from uh, listening to what was on, going on currently. The, synth the synthesizer uh, became too prominent for a lot of groups, and so I, I kind of grew weary of it. And I, I started discovering 60s music, you know, the music of my parents' generation. So, anyhow, so I've been picking up some 80s stuff. But back in the 80s, I was buying cassettes we didn't buy vinyl back in the 80s cassettes were portable you could take them to parties play them in your boom box we called them something else back in the day um you, you know cassette player in your car cassettes were, and cassettes were, were cheap so that was what everybody was buying back then uh i remember my friend jack he was the first uh one to ever have a, a cd player that was probably in the middle late 80s and it's, you know, it was just, it, I think it plugged into the cigarette lighter and then it, the, the cassette thing plugged into the cassette player and uh, it skipped a lot. Not the best technology. So this first one, this is, of course, this is Till Tuesday, Amy Mann, who didn't have a crush on Amy Mann back in the day. This, of course, has the hit uh, Hush Hush, Voices Carry. Had to pick that one up. These were, these were all, shout out to Bob too. Was it? These were all, these, all these 80s records came from Bob, um, Bobland, which is in downtown Shelton. Uh, it's, it's a good story. He's got good prices. Check him out, folks. Uh, this is a group called uh, Boy Meets Girl. And this is our album, Real Life. It had the hit Waiting for a Star to Fall. There was, essentially, they were songwriters in Seattle, Washington. They couldn't find anybody to record their song. They were, somebody suggested that they record it themselves. So pick this up just for the hit. Now, I don't think there was much else that they did. So this is Survivor. You know, the funny thing is, everybody remembers Eye of the Tiger, but this album, Vital Signs, this actually has quite a few good... I mean, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that song was a hit, that song was a hit. It's got I, I Can't Hold Back, High On You, um, The Search Is Over. All three of those were all hits for Survivor back in the 80s. Everybody remembers Eye of the Tiger, of course, from the Rocky movies, but Vital Signs is a pretty... I thought this was a pretty decent, you know, all-in-all album. I'd forgotten how good it was. Tom Tom Club. I'm a big fan of Tina Weymouth, and this is her and her husband from um, Talking Heads, their side project. They did a couple albums. I think this is the easier to find one, but uh, lesser known at the same time. It didn't have the, the, the hit. Um, but 
anytime I can find Tom Tom Club because I never I never see their stuff. I decided to pick it up. All these were five bucks at Bob's. Good price. This is still sealed. This is Katrina and the Waves, Walking on Sunshine. Of course, the uh, Michael J. Fox movie. Um, well, or he was a businessman. I, you know, it's one of those '80s movies that was great, and it's kind of lost to time. No, when people talk about the best movies of the '80s, uh, nobody mentions it. And I, I can't even remember what it was called. Um, was Catherine O'Hara in it too? Maybe, maybe she wasn't. I don't know. No, yeah, doesn't matter. I, I, it was a good movie. I saw it back in the day. I liked it. Berlin. My favorite song from them is actually uh, on the Metro, riding on the Metro, which is not on this. This is the hit. Um, Take My Breath Away, which I believe was in the original Top Gun movie. You know, you know, I never saw the original movie. I never saw the remake. You know, I never saw E.T. either. Never saw, there were a lot of, I'm a big movie buff. We, we and my brother and our friend Amos, we went to a lot of movies back in the 80s. Never saw those movies, we never saw. Wasn't interested in those ones, I guess. Ah, this is a great find. This is uh, ABC, The Lexicon of Love. This has got, uh, of course, Poison Arrow and the look of love on it. I'm a big ABC fan, you know. Um, this is probably one of them and NXS were like my favorite groups back then. You know, I would say that and then I'll find somebody else. I'm like, oh yeah, and I like those guys too. This is uh, XTC Skylarking. I actually had an original copy of this. The original copy is, you know, because it doesn't have the song, um, uh, Dear God. But Dear God is on this one. That's the only song from them that I really need. Any, although I do like Mayor of Simpleton as well, which is not on this album. But uh, not bad. XTC, Skylarking. Uh, and then recently I was gifted by the Vinyl Guru um, a, 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 a sweet uh, white, it was on colored vinyl, um, it, white label, red, red vinyl though, uh, she, she picked up for me at, at a record show when she was in Europe. Um, but I happen to find this is, so now I have two copies because this is a pretty clean original copy too. So the price on that was right. So I picked that up. This is a record, you know, that I've been looking for for a while. I couldn't find it now because of a generous gift and now finding it, I've got two copies. Well, I've also threw these in free. There was a time where I was trying to complete a Stax record run. And this is um, Uptight, which was a movie. It's the soundtrack is done by Booker T and the MGs. And I saw a documentary about Stax recently. And the interesting thing was Booker T and the MGs were like the wrecking crew for Stax. They, they played on all the records. They were like the studio artists. So good stuff. Um, I've always wanted to find from Booker T and the MGs an original copy of Green Onions. I've never, I've never even seen one. No, with all the, all the weird psychedelic stuff I was able to find over the years, there was some R&B stuff that I just never came across that I was looking for. But there you have it. He, he, these did not meet a condition that Bob was willing to sell in his store, so he just gave them to me. And, and the jackets are VG minus. The, I would say the records are probably VG plus. They both played through, no skips, very minimal surface noise. In fact, if I just took them and had them, if I had a spin clean and cleaned them, they'd probably play even better than that. This is um, Johnny Taylor with Who's Making Love to Your Old Lady? Well, you were out making love. It's a fantastic soul record. Stax really knew what they were doing. Put together some good stuff. The rest of this stuff all came from Rainy Day. You know, I've been on this lounge. I call it lounge jazz. These aren't all lounge artists. But the easy listening. I do. I read through a lot of uh, people's ideas of the top uh, albums of in that genre. And I, and I try to find them and pick them up. Uh, this is one that's been on my list for a while. This is not, and this is not a, re, this is a reissue of sorts. This is a... Sec, is the original the original pressings are on six i columbia this is a two i so it's you know it's of the era but it's not an original pressing but it's super clean this is duke ellington indigos this is the this is like the picture perfect epitome of the kind of stuff that i'm looking for so if anybody's got recommendations they can give leave them in the comments because i'm always on the lookout trying to find more of the, of the of these um Easy listening jazz, I like to call it. Uh, and then Adam at Rainy Day, he recommended I get this. He, he said when his daughter was having a hard time sleeping, that he would put this on. And this is uh, Night Train by the Oscar Peterson Trio. This is a fantastic record. This, of course, is a is a reissue. Um, it's the Acoustic Sound series that says audiophile reissues from the world's greatest jazz labels. And this is on Verve. Um, 
th this this is a great record. I enjoyed listening to that. Uh, and then the so not this album, but the, Hank Mobley on a lot of lists. One of his records, and I can't remember the name of it. I, it's it's in my phone, which I'm recording on, so I can't get into it. But Hank Mobley has a, an album that a lot of people consider one of the top easy listening jazz records of all time. Brainy Day didn't have it. I picked this up just because it's got Donald Byrd and it's got Herbie Hancock on it. So I thought this would be worth a listen to. It's a, re it's a reissue off of Blue Note. It's pretty good. It's got a little kind of like peppier kind of jazz in it. So it's not something I really would want to play at night when I'm trying to sleep. Because that's what I do. I put a, a jazz album on when I go to bed. I also, when I'm cooking dinner, I like to do that now. I think it helps with digestion. That's what my story and I'm sticking to it. Here we go again. This is also not an original, but it's not a later reissue. This is a six, this is, the originals are on 6i Columbia. This is on 2i Columbia, but it's a super clean copy. And I paid up for it a little bit. I paid 30, 35 for it. Uh, this is uh, Sketches of Spain by Miles Davis. Miles Davis himself considered this to be his greatest jazz album. So I was happy to pick this one up. Uh, I do like it. I have it on CD, so I didn't really need it on vinyl. But, you know, here here we go again, making <laughs> making those kind of decisions. Do I really need it on vinyl? Well, I got it on vinyl. So I need a haircut, by the way, folks. So I apologize for my hair. Uh, this is John Coltrane and Johnny Hartman. This is on a lot of people's list, too, of the easy listening. Johnny Hartman's got some great vocals. And, of course, Coltrane is Coltrane. Uh, this is a, this is a nice, nice, really nice record. And because I had a couple extra bucks to spend, I picked this up too because it's Duke Ellington and John Coltrane. Um, this one's okay. It's not anything really to write home about. It's I, I don't regret buying it, but it's not you know something that I would play a lot. I'll, I'll put it to you that way. And then the last thing I'll show, I'll kind of point to it like this. It's kind of hard to point because I'm not a weatherman, so I don't know how to do this this way. But these pennants over here, I recently completed a run. Another friend of mine named Jack, he picked up all the AF, the American Football League pennants, a complete run of all 10 teams. I was like, I want to do that too. So I went ahead and did it. But, you know, they've got to have... The, the AF, the American Football League logo on it. It's not, you know, it can't have an NFL logo there just because they're AFL teams. It's got to have the AFL logo. So it took me a while. I completed them all. The Boston Patriots was the last one I, I got. The all, I think they all probably came from either 68 or 69 with one exception because they're all single bar and they all have the same style AFL logo except for the Miami Dolphins. And they'd have to be 68 or 69 because the Bengals didn't come into the league until, that's Terry Bradshaw there. Sorry, folks. There we go. Kind of, well, it's over there. <laughs> it's over there. It's over there. Can't really point to it. They came into the league in 68, so that pennant would have to be from 68 or 69. The Miami Dolphins one, it doesn't have a helmet. It's just the Dolphins logo, and the AFL logo is different. So they came in in 66, 67, so that pennant is either from 66 or 67. But anyhow, that's it. That's my finds and some hockey cards, and it was good to see you all. You take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye.